Psalm 18, the Bible says in verse 30, As for God, His way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all those that trust in Him. For who is God save the Lord? Or who is a rock save our God? Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you, Lord, for the goodness of God. Thank you, Lord, for being so good to us and so gracious towards us. It's most undeserved, but it's, Lord, greatly appreciated. How you work in our lives, how you intervene and interfere in God. We can't thank you enough for all you've done for us. Now, Lord, we thank you for a good report of the good jail services this morning. Thank you for a good Sunday school hour. Thank you, Lord, for good singing that glorifies the Lord. Thank you for a missionary who just stops by. And, Lord, just uh, hearing what you're doing, Lord, it blessed me. God, I'm glad you're saving souls. And, God, I'm glad your folks going to the Jews and winning them. And, God, uh, a lot of folks get to thinking, get to look around thinking God's not doing nothing. But yet, God, you're doing things all over the world. Uh, Lord, we bless you and praise you for what you do. Now, Father, I pray you'd help us today from the Word of God. You know the need and the heart of every person here today. Now, God, use this unworthy vessel. Speak to hearts. Glorify your name. Save that one nearest hell. And God, certainly revive the saints of God. We'll bless you and praise you for what you do, for it's in the holy name of the Lord Jesus we pray. Amen and amen. I'm interested in these two verses. I want you to notice, first of all, a bearing that's taintless. It said in verse 30, As for God, his way is perfect. The bearing of the Lord, or the way of the Lord, the way the Lord directs, my dear friends, it's taintless, it's perfect. Can I say you can do no better than follow after the Lord? Amen. Too many times we get in trouble when we start going our way. But friends, His way is the only way, and it's a perfect way. It's a bearing that's taintless. Uh, I want you to notice a Bible that's tried. It says the word of the Lord is tried. Can I say there's been no book in the history of man that's been attacked uh, and torn down more than the Word of God, uh, yet it's forever settled in heaven. Uh, every time they try to correct it, every time they try to do away with it, all they do is prove its authenticity because, my dear friends, it was written by the hand of God uh, and it's, my dear friends, the absolute and final authority for our lives. Uh, Say, preacher, why do you preach the Bible? Why do you live by the Bible? Why do you read the Bible? Because uh, the Bible's been tried. Uh, and my dear friends, it's came forth as gold. Uh, it will help your life. Uh, we also find there's a buckler that's trans, uh, trustworthy. Look again at verse 30. He is a buckler to all those that trust in him. A buckler's a shield. Can I say you can do no better than lining up behind the Lord? Uh, he can withstand every fiery dart of the devil. Uh, he can withstand every arrow, everything that is shot at you and I. Uh, he is trustworthy. Uh, nothing has ever penetrated him. Friend, uh, I can declare that there is no greater than the Lord. Uh, we also find a blatant truth in verse 31. For who is God save the Lord? Or who is a rock save our God? Can I say, David, uh, 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 pinning down uh, uh, this psalm uh, inspired by the Holy Spirit to write this psalm uh, uh, generations ago because he, God knew we'd need it today. Uh, uh, God says, uh, who is, uh, David said, who is God save the Lord? Uh, who is a rock save our God? Uh, David reveals in this psalm that the Lord is his strength. Look in verse number one. Uh, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. Uh, David re uh, reveals the Lord's his stability. Look in verse 
Verse number two, uh, the Lord is my rock. He's not just a rock. Uh, he's just not the rock. Uh, it don't matter until he becomes your rock. Uh, he said, the Lord is my rock uh, and my fortress uh, and my deliverer, uh, my God, my strength, uh, in whom I will trust, uh, my buckler uh, and the horn of my salvation uh, and my high tower. Uh, David said, when you look at me, uh, when you see all the blessings in my life and what I've accomplished, uh, my stability uh, is the Lord. Uh, he's my strength. Uh, he's my stability. Uh, but he also says, the Lord's my scope. Uh, look in verse 3. Uh, he said, I will call upon the Lord uh, who is worthy to be praised. Uh, so shall I be saved from my enemies. Uh, he said, the Lord's my scope. Uh, he's the one I look to. Uh, he's the one I love. Uh, he's the one I lean on. Uh, there's no one like the Lord. Uh, can I say in this day and age, uh, too many have lost their view of who God is. Isaiah said in Isaiah 6 and 3, uh, speaking of seeing uh, uh, in the year King Uzziah died in the temple, uh, uh, the Lord let him look a little higher and see seraphim uh, uh, with six wings uh, hiding their face and their feet and flying with two around the throne of God. Uh, and he said, And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. Uh, the whole earth is full of His glory. Uh, we've lost sight of who God is in this generation. Uh, he's still holy. Uh, he's still God Almighty. Uh, he still is uh, uh, the only means of salvation. Uh, hey, He uh, who is above us all in the earth is His footstool and He makes His sides in the north. Uh, who is man that God would visit with us? Uh, who is man that God would contemplate anything for us? Uh, hey, God is still God Almighty. We've lost sight of that. Say, preacher, how can you say that? We're a Christian nation, not when we're uh, uh, pushing transgenders on children. Right. Not when we're putting drag queens in our schools teaching children it's normal. Right. Not when we're mutilating the bodies of precious children telling them it's okay. Uh, 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 not when we're pushing the abortion gender agenda. Not when we're uh, 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 pushing the, uh, the drug agenda and the alcohol agenda. Uh, the pornography agenda, the homosexual agenda. We're not a Christian nation. And friends, it's infiltrating churches and even some of God's people doubt God on things because we've lost our view of who God is. We've lost the vision of God for us. You see so many people sitting at home think God don't care about me. That's why you need to get in the Bible. Romans 8.31, what, uh, what shall we say uh, uh, then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Right. Say, preacher, aren't you worried about the abortion crowd? Not at all. Aren't you worried about the uh, uh, transgender crowd? Not at all. Uh, aren't you worried about the, uh, the Washington, D.C. crowd? Not at all. Uh, 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 friend, uh, I, I serve the Lord. Uh, and if God be for us, who can be against us? Uh, say, preacher, uh, what if they throw you in jail? We'll start a jail ministry. It don't matter, friend. Uh, what matters is pleasing the Lord. Uh, and I learned a long time ago it can't come to me unless it goes through his hand first. Uh, we've lost the vision of God for us. We're cowering down to a bunch of wicked mess and wicked men. Mm. Lord, help us. And by the way, if you vote, you better vote. You say, what good does it do? Because then you can complain about it when it doesn't go the right way, huh? Right. Oh, right. If you don't vote, I don't want to hear you complain. Right. Right. You know, people have died for you to have the ability to vote. Right. Two very important issues in Kentucky, issues one and two. Now, I can't tell you how to vote, but I can tell you how I'm going to vote. I'm voting yes on both of them. Huh? Yeah, issue one of them is uh, 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 to make certain that the, uh, uh, the Constitution of Kentucky, which already is against abortion, will be carried out. The other one is written that uh, uh, right now in Kentucky, uh, our, uh, our Kentucky Congress only meets uh, for a few weeks out of the year unless the governor calls for a special session. 
where during COVID the governor was doing a lot of wicked things, but our Congress couldn't convene uh, and do anything about it. So the other issue says that at any time when there's something that affects you and I, uh, uh, the president of the Senate of Kentucky can call for a special session and they can get some business done. Now the blessing uh, of Kentucky uh, is our Congress in Kentucky uh, is about 90% Republican. I've heard there's 67 seats that Republicans are running unopposed. People won't even run against them. So everything our liberal governor does, uh, it can be undone by our Congress. So uh, that issue says that if we need something done, they can go to business. Now, i got a real problem anyway. If they're supposed to work for me and we need something done, they can't work for me. Huh? So that, that's, that's why I'm voting yes on both those issues. You vote how you want to. But if you're a, a, a Bible-believing, God-fearing Christian, I think you might vote the same way I'm voting. By the way, the Supreme Court in Kentucky has been, it's had three justices who've been liberal and wicked for years. You put three justices with a liberal, wicked governor, and uh, they'll uphold anything he stands for until a federal judge gets involved, which means a lot of tax dollars wasted. Now, there's a fellow running for the Supreme Court. I can't tell you who to vote for, but I know who I'm voting for. His last name's Fisher. Just think of Foster. Hmm. Can I say he's the one that wrote the bill that we're going to vote yes on that lets our Congress uh, uh, be able to assemble anytime they need to assemble. He's a very brilliant man, uh, but he's very conservative. I've heard he's a God-fearing man, uh, and he's running for Supreme Court. I'm voting for him. Anybody loves God, hates abortion, and loves the things of Kentucky, I'm voting for him. Hmm? Uh, so anyway, there you go. So preach, aren't you afraid to say stuff like that? No, I say a lot worse things than that. Uh, listen, you better go out and vote. I, I'm just going to say this. I'm here. I don't know why I'm here. I'm here. We all know Trump won the last election. But you know why Trump's not in the office? Because too many of God's people worship Trump and not God. When Trump wasn't put in office, I seen Baptist preachers lose their faith. Uh, by the way, the Bible still says it's God who puts people in positions of authority. Hmm? And can I say, this election will determine the next two years. I don't know, maybe you like paying nine nine ninety nine for a pound of bacon. Maybe you like paying three fifty for for a dozen eggs. I remember when it was fifty nine cents a dozen. That was three fifty. Gracie, where you at? Get some more chickens. Get us some eggs, girl. Oh, uh, we'll help buy the chickens, huh? Huh? Maybe you like paying three dollars for for milk. Maybe you like paying four and five dollars for gasoline, huh? You can't tell me America has gotten that bad in two years. It's not about America. It's about them destroying America. The powers that be want us to become part of a global network. Uh, they want uh, 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 George Soros and that crowd pushing their agenda. Do you realize that the transgender uh, 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 and mutilation of bodies uh, and kids running around schools uh, uh, declaring that they're a dog or a cat, do you know where that comes from? It comes from an outfit out in Colorado uh, who's pushed that agenda and all the teachers union have lined up with them and they're allowing it to happen in school districts all across this country. Uh, they're saying parents have no right uh, to t tell what can be taught to their t uh, kids. Uh, and local school boards uh, are so afraid to stand up against it because they've got so much money and so much power behind them. Uh, they're afraid of being blackballed. Uh, it's high time that we as Americans uh, stand up and take our country back. Uh, and it begins with getting on our face before God. God, uh, and asking God to once again uh, in his wrath uh, uh, show mercy uh, and then stand up be accounted for uh, tell him you're not taking it anymore uh, and when we become Americans uh, and you can be the best American by becoming Christian uh, afraid we can take our nation back Amen. so you ought to vote because mm. we're in a mess and everywhere I go, folks are facing it, except Florida. Yeah. 
might be a nice candidate 2024 on the ticket if Trump gets tired of toying with everybody whether or not he's going to run again oh DeSantos might be good I got a good pastor friend in Florida he said leave our governor alone we like him right where he's at yeah. told him I'd trade him yeah. could I say too many have lost the victory God has provided for us 1 Corinthians 15, 57, But thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. And I say, you've lost sight of all these things. We're not on the losing side. We're on the win side. I've done read the back of the book. We win. We win big. Are you listening? But why we walk around like we're paupers? Walk around defeated? Walk around Because you have been oppressed by the world, the flesh, the devil. And if you dwell on all their mess long enough, you'll go from oppressed to depressed. In a real hurry, huh? I'm interested in verse 31. David writes this. He writes, For who is God save the Lord? I'm going to preach on this thought for just a few minutes this morning. On who is God? Hey. Who is He? You know what I mean? We come out, we sing about Him. We say we talk to Him. We say we read about Him. But who is He? This morning we need to be reminded who our God is. Can I say first of all, He's the one that reigns. Revelation 19, 6 says, And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude and the voice of many waters, uh, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Uh, uh, Can I say it? He reigns today. Uh, 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 Listen, uh, He's omnipotent. Uh, That means He has all power. Uh, I said all power, not most power, not some power, uh, all power. Uh, If you got that picture of the Lord and the devil arm wrestling and the Lord barely winning out, junk that thing. Uh, Hey, the devil can't even come to the table to arm wrestle the Lord. Uh, He has all power. Uh, He's omnipresent. He's everywhere all the time. Uh, Hey, he's omniscient. He knows everything. Uh, Nothing's ever occurred to God. Uh, He's always known everything, knew the end from the beginning, been beginning from the end. Uh, Hey, can I say he's not only uh, omnipotent, he's not only omnipresent, he's not only omniscient, uh, he's only, he's the only one. Uh, Isaiah 45, 5 says, I am the Lord, uh, and there is none else. Uh, There is no God beside me. Uh, I girded thee, though thou hast not known me. Uh, Hey, even before I knew him, uh, he knew me, uh, knew where I was, uh, knew what I needed, uh, made a way where I could know him. Uh, he's the only God. Uh, hey, he reigns. Uh, I'll just stick with him. Uh, he's God. Uh, I'm not looking for another. Uh, he's done well by me. Uh, he's been faithful. Uh, he's been true. Uh, he's been everything he said he would be uh, and so much more. Uh, he's my God today. Uh, Who is God? He's the only one that reigns. Who's God? He redeems. He redeems. Mm, Jeremiah 15, 21 says, And I will deliver thee out of the hand of the wicked, and I will redeem thee out of the hand of the terrible. Uh, Isaiah 47, 4, As for our Redeemer, the Lord of hosts is his name, uh, the Holy One of Israel. Uh, He's the Redeemer. Uh, Hey, I couldn't save myself. Uh, I didn't even know I was lost. Uh, I was just belling through the world. Uh, But hey, uh, he came to where I was. uh, Showed me my lost condition. uh, But showed me he was the Savior. Uh, Hey, when I called on him, he redeemed me. Uh, He rescued me from my sin. Uh, Broke the chains of sin. Uh, I took an old Gentile dog. uh, Washed him in his blood. uh, Wrote his name down in heaven. uh, Birthed me in a family of God. uh, Hey, made me a new creature. Uh, That's who he is. He redeemed me, my dear friends. Uh, That term redeem has a connotation of being on the auction block, being a slave. Can I say, uh, when I was on the auction block, nobody wanted me. Mm, I couldn't have paid my own fare. But the great I am came walking by. Said, I'll pay a sin debt. 
and he bought me uh, and he, after he sought me uh, then he taught me uh, and made me one of his own uh, can I say he redeemed me uh, from the curse of the law from my sin uh, and from my eternal destiny in hell he redeemed me from all that mess uh, he redeems he reigns who is God he's the one that restores Amen. oh yeah Psalm 51 12 David said restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and behold me with thy free spirit Isaiah 57 18 I've seen his ways and will heal him I will lead him also and restore comforts unto him and to his mourners uh, uh, can I say God is a restoring God what a blessing he redeems uh, but I'm glad he made provision uh, that even after I got saved uh, when I wasn't what I should be uh, and when I fell off in the ditch or when I stumbled and fell uh, he came by and picked me up uh, dusted me off uh, and restored me uh, and put me back on the way called straight he's a restorer now a lot of Baptists won't restore you they want to keep you down they'll talk about you they'll chew you up and spit you out but that's not the Lord he restores he redeems can I say this who is God he's a reliable friend Proverbs 8, 20, 18, 24, a man that has friends must show himself friendly. You know, by the way, that's why you don't have a lot of friends. You're stuck up. Uh, you're proud. You're arrogant. You're afraid you're going to get the cooties or the COVID. Uh, don't be whining around with, to somebody that's got friends that, oh, you, you just think you're better than it. No, just friendly. Uh, if you don't have friends, you're telling on yourself. You're not friendly. Uh Quit being a uh, stick in the mud and be friendly. Sure. Uh, uh, this side of church, you ought to go over that side of church and introduce yourself. <laughs> and vice versa. In this crowd, you ought to do the same. And get to know people. You might find out the best friend you'll ever have in this world. Somebody over there you ain't even talked to. Sure. Sure. You ought to have friends, you must show yourself friendly. And there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. And that friend's the friend of Jesus. Love that old hymn, I'll be a friend of Jesus. <laughs> Boy, he's sure been a friend to me. He's a reliable friend. Paul said, all men forsook me, nevertheless the Lord stood by me. Uh, when everybody else is walking out, there's the Lord. Uh, hey, he's a friend that's sticking closer. He's a friend that never sleeps or slumbers. He's a friend that cares for your soul. He said, cast all your cares on him, for he careth for you. He's a friend that's always available, and he wants to be a help to you. Huh? Who is the Lord? Mm, he redeems, he restores, he reigns. He's a reliable friend. But can I say this about the Lord? He will recompense. Yes, Miss Melissa and I was talking before service. She said, preacher, there's a bunch of them think they're getting away with it, but they're not getting away with anything. The Lord's coming. And she's right. Uh, Jeremiah 25, 14 says this, For many nations and great kings shall serve themselves, serve themselves of them also. And I will recompense them according to their deeds and according to the works of their own hands. Yeah. Lord said, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Uh, I know Hillary Bleach watched all them emails, and we know she's as crooked as the day is long, and so was Bill, and so was Obama. And by the way, if you get the White House, you've got to be crooked somewhere. Hmm? Uh, you don't play ball, you ain't going. But some of them are so blatant and got caught red-handed, but yet they bought somebody off, or they got pictures of somebody doing something not right. I don't know. We can see the wrong, but it's amazing how the FBI can't find anything. Uh, but the Lord sees it all and I promise you nobody's getting away with anything I heard this story about back in the days when people traveled by horse and buggy boys google that okay? Uh, or go back and watch Little House on the Prairie that'll help you uh, and uh, this fella had, had parked his buggy. He really didn't tie the horse up real good, and his young son was still in the buggy, and something spooked the horse. The horse took off. And the horse was running frantic, and that buggy's just a bouncing behind him, little boy in there, and it looks like it's nothing but peril and doom for that little boy. That was blue. Here comes a rider on a horse. He, he, he rushes with that horse up to the runaway horse, and 
Even to the point where he puts his own life in danger, he jumps from his horse to the horse that is pulling the buggy. He settles the horse, slows it down, and he brings the child safe back to his parents. Well, the story goes on like this. The little boy raises up, and he's just wicked. He's troubled to his parents. He's troubled. The older he gets, the more wicked he gets into, the more wickedness he gets into. And one day, it catches up to him. He's facing trial. Doesn't look good. And he walks into the courtroom, and he's there, and all of a sudden he looks up, and he sees the man that saved him when he was a little boy on that horse. And he begins to plead to that man, say, Sir, sir, remember me? I'm the little boy that was in the buggy. Uh, I'm the little boy you rescued. You remember me? And the man said, I do remember you, son. He said, That day I was your Savior, yep. but today I'm your judge. Yep. Now, neighbor, today's the day of salvation. If you don't know the Lord, you better trust in Him today. And if you do know the Lord, you better make sure you're right with Him. Because every one of us is going to give an account of ourselves to Him at the Bema Seat. Uh, uh, the saved going to the judgment seat of Christ, uh, but the unsaved uh, are going to the white, great white throne judgment. Uh, will you be judged for all your sins uh, and you'll be cast off into the lake of fire because your name's not found written in the Lamb's book of life? And I'm telling you, God is a God of love and mercy today. But there's coming a day. You're going to stand before him and give an account of your life before him. Today he's Savior. But make no mistake, he's coming as the judge. There's five judgments taught in the scriptures. One of them's for the nations, one for the child of God. One for, uh, he's got the five judgments. He's coming. He's going to judge you. You better make sure you're right with God. And then let me say this. He's a God that will reward Matthew 25, 21, And the Lord said unto him, Well done, the good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou to the joy of the Lord. We know our, as children of God, our works will be judged by fire. Though it be gold, silver, precious stone, or it be wood, hay, and stubble, those things that are gold, silver, precious stone, or rewards be given to us, will lay at his feet. And for whatever reason, in his great infant's mercy and, and, and grace, he gives them back to us. What a God. We know our labor in the Lord's not in vain. He will reward us. R.G. Lee preached years ago that wonderful message, there's a payday someday. And he will reward us. The real question, David said, for who is God? Save the Lord. Let me ask you this question, do you know him? Is he your God? Do you know him as your Lord and Savior? Can you go back to a place where you realized you was lost and you believed on the Lord and was saved? Say, so, well, preacher, I pray. I didn't ask you that. Preacher, I've been baptized. I didn't ask you that. Preacher, I believe that Jesus is Lord. I didn't ask you that. Has there ever been a point where you accepted him as your Lord? Where you called upon him repentance and faith and ask Him to save you. If you've never in your heart believed on the Lord, today's your day. I wouldn't put it off. This old thing's a winding up. Jesus is coming. He's coming as judge. Is He your Lord? If He's not, I'd make Him my Lord today. And if you're here today and you're saved, who is God to you? Other people ought to know that you're a Christian, that you serve the Lord Jesus Christ. I was just at a four or five star resort, minding my own business, going out to get into a rental car, go to church, and a security guard walks by and says, you're a pastor, aren't you? I said, yes, sir, I am guilty. He said, I thought so. He just walked on. The next night, I get back to the resort from church. I'm headed to my room, and he stops me. He said, what church are you with? So I told him. I asked him what church he went to. He said, I'm Seventh-day Adventist. I didn't blast his religion. I didn't tell him he was part of a cult. I didn't tell him all. I told him he needed Jesus, and I told him where he could find him. 
said, you need to go up and visit this church up here on the hill. They'll help you. See, there's something missing in his life. Why would he be interested in my life? But he saw something. I wasn't wearing no neon jacket that says, I'm a preacher. I'm a pastor. I got the answers. I didn't have any. I just minded my own business. Why did he seek me out? Because what he had wasn't sustaining him. I'm just thankful he saw something in me. Has people seen anything in you? Who's God in your life? Hmm? When was the last time somebody out of the blue just stopped you and asked you the hope of your calling? Hmm? Who's God? Who is God? I know He reigns, but does He reign in your life? I know He redeems. Has He redeemed you? I know He restores. Has He restored you? Say, preach, I've never fallen into wicked sin, but hey, have you fallen into doubt? Have you fallen into a, a little confusion? Have you fallen into following your flesh more than following Him? Maybe you need to be restored this morning. Uh, who is God? Is He your reliable friend? Or do you rely on somebody else as your best friend? He is going to recompense. And He does have rewards. Is He your God? He can be. If you don't know Him, we'd love to introduce you to Him. If you do know him and you're not ready to meet him, I'd get ready to meet him. Today may be the day. Let's all stand, Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. Some are already coming and praying. God spoke to your heart. The altar's open. If you need to know the Lord, why don't you come? we got people all over this building. Take a Bible and show you how to be saved. You can be saved today. While they're picking out a song, let's pray. Father, we sure do bless you. Lord, I know who you are, and I'm glad to know that. There is no rock beside thee. There is no other God beside thee. I'm glad you're the God of my salvation. Lord, I fear in my soul there may be somebody here tonight or this morning that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior. Lord, I pray they'd come, place their trust in you today. I pray they'd come. I pray the sweet Holy Spirit through cords of love would draw them to an altar of repentance. Those that are saved, Lord, I pray that they'd come. Maybe some need to come in thanksgiving. Maybe some need to come in praise, but maybe some need to come in repentance. Lord, I pray you do a work in the hearts of your people. God, do a work around here today. Speak to hearts. Glorify your namesake. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.